have you ever had one thing after the other, worry upon worry, trauma upon trauma, stack up on your head? <laughs> How do you trust God through that, right? Well, stay tuned. You're going to find out what happened when my next guest pushed into trust when all seemed lost. Welcome to The Prayer Investigator. I'm Linda Evans Shepherd. My wonderful guest is Michelle Medlock Adams. Michelle is a friend and she is a best selling New York Times ghostwriter. Plus, she writes many books, including Springtime for the Spirit, Fly High, and My God is Bigger Than That. Well, Michelle is not writing, she is traveling around the country and speaking at writers' conferences and women's events. She married her best friend, Jeff, from high school, and they have two grown daughters and six grandchildren. She rescues dogs and has a mischievous dachshund, and she loves the cubs and fly fishing and all things leopard. <laughs> Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am so glad that you were here, and I'm really interested in this topic, the topic of trusting God when you have not been informed of what the outcome of a difficult situation is going to be. Now, you've been through that yourself, haven't you? I have. I think it's one of the hardest things for us to walk through as believers. Wouldn't it be easier if we just knew the plan? You know, A to B, B to C, don't, not skipping D, like all of those things. But that's not how God works. That takes no faith, I realize. And this this was one of those times in my life. I've been a Christian since I was under the pew in my car seat. Like I've always loved God. I remember making the commitment when I was, you know, like nine years old at a Christian church camp. So I've heard from God my whole life. But this was a season of health crises in our family. My daughter, Abby, our oldest, was pregnant with our first grandbaby, which is such a joyous occasion. We were so excited to become grandparents. And Abby was struggling with something called HELP syndrome, which I didn't know anything about that, had never heard of it, but it's a very serious form of preeclampsia. And she had been in and out of the hospital her entire pregnancy and ended up having our grandson early. And so that happens a lot with that. And I was there with her. Of course, I, I would go anytime she would call and say something's wrong. I would drive the three hours to Lexington where she was. During this season, my husband's mother Nana was actually actively dying. So he couldn't come. So I'm there by myself with my daughter. Jeff is with his mother where he needed to be. And at this early birth, Bear was whisked off to the NICU and Abby was losing blood and they didn't know where. So she was taken to intensive care. And I just was in the hallway by myself going, what is going on? I don't, and no one was giving me answers. I was very panicked. And I, I actually remember sliding down the wall in the hospital for year and just, I just kind of I just collapsed into a big ball of crying. I just, I just had been so strong and tried to be, but didn't have any, I wasn't hearing from God, you know, God, what's going on? Lord, I need you to intervene. So I called my good friend, Eva Marie Everson, who you also know. And I called her and I said, Eva, I know you used to be a nurse. They're throwing all these medical terms at me. I don't know what's going on. Can you talk me through what's going on with my daughter, with my grandson and with my mother-in-law? And in her very Southern, sweet, calming voice, she talked through every medical term. And it was a lot. I mean, Linda, it was a lot. It was, there was these were some very big obstacles. And she said to me at the end of, of all of this explaining, Michelle, I'm not going to lie to you. These are some really big obstacles. But here's what you and I both know. Our God is bigger than all of that. Mm. And when she said that, it was like the voice of God coming through little Eva's Southern voice. And I slid back up the wall and I stopped crying. And I said, you're exactly right. That's what I know to be true. That's what the word of God says. He's bigger than all of this. He's got this. Even though I don't understand, I don't have any idea how they're going to fix any of this. I know that God is in control. I know he's got this. And so that became kind of our, our anthem as we walk through the next hours, the next weeks. And then it led into the next months because 14 months later, I get a phone call from Abby. I was in the middle of, of a lake fishing with Jeff down in Florida and Okeechobee is where we were having just this wonderful time, husband and wife fishing. And I get this sobbing call from Abby. We know, no mother wants to get that call from their child. I said, honey, what's going on? She said, mom, how soon can you get here? I said, honey, what's happening? She said, they believe Bear has a brain tumor and it's inoperable. Guess mm -hmm. what rose up in me again? Our God is bigger than all of that. And I spoke those words to Abby, even though I was having a hard time believing in myself. And I got on the next plane and I, and we have, we have stood on that and on God's 
ability to be bigger, God's knowing in every situation throughout this entire situation with our grandson bear, who just turned six, two weeks ago and just started kindergarten and is thriving and playing soccer. And, and that brain tumor is on his brainstem, which controls all life. And they said that it is inoperable, but guess what? It hasn't changed shape. It hasn't changed size. And they believe it's 99% not cancerous. We just monitor it each year now, but there have have been some huge miracles from the time of 14 months to the age of six that we know God was in, even though we didn't understand all the steps in between. Those are some difficult times and you have to know who your God is. Well, I think we all go through difficult times and it's sort of a, a what if question. What if this happens? What if that should happen? What if I should lose my loved one? Or what if I should lose my health? And the answer, God is bigger than that. That's a statement of faith, isn't it? Boy, is it. And it was such a, and still is a resounding anthem in my life. After Eva said that when Bear was born, before I hung up the phone, I said to her, Eva, that is so good. And that is so God. We are going to write a book about this someday. And as you know, that book, Our God is Bigger Than That, won one of the big awards at the ASA conference this year. And we were so honored by that. But that we wanted to put that in a book, even for kids, because if you can teach little ones that our God is bigger than anything you're ever going to face, can you imagine knowing that when you're one or two or three or four or five and growing up with this knowledge, this, this overwhelming sense of peace, no matter what you face, God's in control. I thought I had that, but my faith was really challenged when it came to my grandchildren, especially with bear. It's just a different kind of love you have for them than even how you have for your kids. It was challenged, but that resounding anthem. I mean, it rings even in my spirit. Every time I face something, whether it's with myself or with Jeff, my husband, or with my professional life, whatever it is, God is bigger than everything. And I just think that is something that we can, we can kind of hang our hat on <laughs> no matter what you're going through in your prayer life. Even when you don't know what to pray, just know God is bigger than whatever you're facing. Michelle, what about the person who has lost a loved one? Is God even bigger than that? We walked through that this last few years too. My brother-in-law, my sister's precious husband, Jan Spaulding, passed away of COVID in 2020, in November of 2020, right when it was just kind of all hitting the world. And we were in the middle of a revival meeting. 20, 30 people got COVID and and our pastor passed away. So not only was he my brother-in-law, who I loved dearly, but he was our pastor. You talk about shaking people up. And even in that, as I watched my sister walk through grief and take over the church before God brought somebody else in to run it. I, I've i seen such strength in her. And again, I've seen our God is bigger than that situation. It wasn't what any of us would have chosen. Certainly not. We'd love to have Jan still here. But on the days when you feel alone, and I know my sisters walk through this, and on the days when you feel like nobody cares and that God is on vacation and just left somebody else in charge who doesn't give any kind of consideration to your feelings, you have to know that what you're feeling isn't true, that we choose faith over fear and that we don't go by our feelings. We go by faith. There's a song by Janie Grine, an old recording artist I used to listen to with my girls when they were little. And there's a line that says, I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by the word that's real. And that is exactly what we were saying when we say our God is bigger than that, because our feelings will lie to us. And that's the part of our soulish realm that, you know, we have to get under the blood of Jesus every day, right? Because it's easy to be moved in our feelings. But I've seen my sister stand on faith when her feelings were telling her, God doesn't care about you, but he does. And he is bigger than even grief. Well, you say that God cares about us, but isn't faith when we can tell God what to do and then he just does it? I mean, isn't that how it works? Wouldn't that be great if we could just say, now, God, here's my agenda. And these are the things I would like you to do. And let me know when they're done. I'd really appreciate it. I mean, I would, I could really walk that out. Well, I am, I am a type A list maker, checker offer. That is who I am. Um, I wish it were like that, but I can tell you in, in all the years I've served God, which has been since I was a very little girl, it's almost never been the way I would envision it or expect it, or even think that it would be the most logical way for it to, to be fulfilled. God does it in his own way because he is bigger and tells us in the word that he's, his ways are higher. So I think we have to know he knows better, even when it doesn't make any sense, the things that are going on, especially in today's world, you know, some things are going on. You think, boy, this doesn't make any sense. If I were God, I wouldn't let this happen, but God's ways are higher and we can trust him knowing that he has the best plan for each of us personally and globally. And I don't know about you, but that gives me that sense of peace that I can go to bed at night and lay my head down and actually rest. Otherwise I'd be trying to figure everything out all the time. 
Oh, right. I mean, we can figure out what we think would be best, but what if there's a plan that surpasses what we're going through right now? Have you ever seen that happen? The thing that you thought was the worst thing ended up being the best thing. Yes. And and you can't imagine when you're walking through that situation that anything good could come of it, right? But Romans 8, 28 tells us all things work together, right? For the good of those who love the Lord. I think saying that and walking through it are completely different experiences. I remember when my dad passed away and, you know, no one likes to lose a parent. That's so hard. And, and he was older and, and he was ready to go. But I remember thinking, this is horrible for my mother. He's our patriarch. You know, he's, he's the, the guy we all turn to. He's, he's so strong in, the, in his faith. And, and what are we going to do without him? But, you know, when he passed and he was ready to go, he was tired of fighting. When he went, I remember talking to so many of the nurses who had taken care of my dad when he was ill. And there was so much good that came from that. He led so many people to the Lord that we had no idea the dad was doing when he was at his rehabilitation, when he had several strokes. And so there were lots of good things that came from that, but we couldn't see it in the middle of it. We just thought, why wasn't God just miraculously heal him? Well, if he had done it the way we would have liked, dad wouldn't have reached all those people. I mean, there was probably 30 people in the months that my dad was in out of the hospital that daddy led to, to the kingdom of God. And they're all going to be in, in heaven because of my dad. He wouldn't have even had access to those people. So I, I think sometimes we have to look a little harder, but he'll let you see those things sometimes. And I'm so grateful because it makes it easier to go through when you know that there really is good woven in if you'll just trust him in it. What they say from Genesis, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good for the saving of many lives. And that's from the story of Joseph, when Joseph was betrayed by his brothers and ended up being in charge of gathering the grain to save not only the nation of Egypt, but even his own people. Do you think that's how it always works? I would like to think that's how it always works. I don't think we always get to see it, but I do think that God always has this overall plan. It keeps using the word plan because that's what it is. It's this master plan that we just have one small part of it. Even when he strategically places us in a job or in a church or even in a family, it's the yours, mine, and ours, you marry, and that, that happens. Sometimes we think, now, God, <laughs> where are you in all this? I'm I'm on the struggle bus, right? I don't understand what's going on right now. And then you see later on what he's done and how even when it looked like nothing could good could come from this or are you sure there's a plan or are you, are you paying attention? He always is. I, I mean, every single time I look back and I'm glad that I journal because I would forget these things. But when I go back and I look at my prayer journals and I, and I read these desperate prayers, I would write out in the middle of something like when my grandson was diagnosed and all these different things. And then I, I look six months later and I see my goodness. And all of that, look what he did. I'll tell you a quick testimony from that. When Bear was 22 months, they diagnosed him with being deaf in one ear and 30% loss in the other. We didn't know, but it was because that tumor was blocking all the, the waves that would go, the sound waves. So we couldn't hear anything, but we didn't know this. We just knew he wasn't speaking much. And he, you know, you would holler for him and he, he wouldn't always come. We thought he was kind of just being a boy, but he was just couldn't hear us. So we went to God with this, just like everything else. You know, God, you're bigger than everything. We're asking you to supernaturally heal him so that he can hear. So um, I remember driving with my husband to a, a conference I was going to be speaking at in North Carolina. And I just gotten the word from Abby that he'd been diagnosed, you know, deaf in one ear, 30% in the other. And I said, we're going to God with this like we have everything else. And Jeff and I were praying. And as we were praying, a double rainbow went across the highway. As mm -hmm. we were praying, I mean, it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, Thank you for that little confirmation there, Lord. That's so beautiful. And I just cried. And and I wish I could tell you, it always ends up with, you know, butterflies and bluebirds on your shoulder and double rainbows. It doesn't always that we can see. But this particular time, not that it was the next day, but within a couple of months, Bear's hearing was restored. They did another test. And the doctor kept saying, run it again, run it again, run it again. He heard perfectly. And there's no explanation that the brain stem tumor is still there. It hasn't changed shape or size. He still shouldn't be able to hear, but guess what? He hears better than anyone. He's He's got perfect hearing. That's only God. It's like he throws us these little miracle bones every so often. <laughs> and I, I so appreciate that because we would still love and trust him even if he didn't. But when we have those testimonies, I think we need to share them to encourage others. Hey, I know it's not always easy, but in the midst of brain stem tumors on grandsons, God still does miracles. He is still in charge. And that miracle of bear, his hearing coming back, as so many people have been praying for him with these little bracelets that say prayers for bear. Thousands of people wear those and pray for him daily. I hear from them all the time on Facebook, people I don't even know saying, 
Hey, I wanted to update on Bear. We've been praying for him because through the power of social media, I've been able to share his testimony. See what the devil meant for harm, as you said, God turned around for good. And many people are following his story and seeing God's goodness and miraculous power in Bear's life. And he'll do the same through with our testimony, your individual testimony, whatever you're going through. Oh, that's a beautiful word. Now, I know that there are people right now going, man, I wish I could trust God like that. Could you pray with them? and help them to let go of their fear and trust the Lord with all their heart. Oh, I would love to do that. Let's pray right now. Father God, I thank you so much for who you are, that you are so much bigger than any problem any mountain will ever face. And Father, I just ask right now that you help us to stand firmly on your word and that we embrace your faith. Father, that we begin to walk in your goodness and trust in you, even when all the circumstances look horrible, even when it looks like there's no way you could be in it, to trust you, to know that we don't go by our feelings, but we go by your word that is real. Father, I pray for those whose hearts are broken today, who've lost loved ones, who maybe haven't seen the miraculous power come through in their situation yet, and they're wondering, where are you in all this? Father, wrap your massive arms of love around them right now to let them know Know that you are there, that you love them, and that the story isn't finished. Because until you are the final word, it's not done. So help us in those waiting moments as we trust in you to be able to stand and not grow weary. And help us to lift others up who are walking through these situations, Lord, to let them know, hey, don't worry, God is bigger than this, and He's got you. And Lord, we just love you, and we are so grateful that you are our God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And then I'm going to add a tiny prayer. God, this thing, this question mark in my path, in my way, I give it to you and I declare it's your problem because I know you're going to work it all out for the good. And I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus name. Michelle, what is a final word that you would say to encourage those watching today? I would tell you this. We are all human. We're all going to lose it from time to time. I call them Michelle meltdowns. I have them often. (laughs) It's not that I don't love God and it's not that you don't love God. But when you have one of those little meltdowns where you're not really walking in faith and you feel like you've let God down, he's got you. He knows who you are. He created you. He sees your heart. So don't beat yourself up on those times when your faith maybe isn't as much as it needs to be. Just continue to thank him for his mercies that are new every morning and start again and, and just to say, Father, I thank you and I can trust you in this. Even though I don't see a way, I know you have a way. So I don't want you to beat yourself up when when you're not standing as you think as good in faith as you should. God knows. He sees your heart and he has got you. And I promise you, he's not done until the victory's won. That is a good word. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And we so enjoyed having you here today. Gosh, thanks for having me. I love you so much. <laughs> love you too. Oh, I hope that inspired you. If it did, would you like, share, and subscribe? And we have a gift for you. Just go to myprayergift.com and we will immediately send you a beautiful video, a blessing prayer that you can play, pray, and print. And remember this, God loves you and he wants you to talk to him. See you next time.